this is gonna sound funny um but like most of us i was in the shower when he said that to me i thought to myself wow this scripture makes some bold claims right very very bold claims god already knew the combinations god is the greatest singer that you'll ever know it is god's glory to conceal something and it's the glory of us to search it out creativity does not trump holiness to the unboxed cool and creative peeps that are watching this i really want you to think today how am i using my there is no better person on the planet to ask for assistance with creativity than this thing on okay cue exciting podcast intro We were created carefully by a creative creator who crafted the cosmos. He caressed the soul of the earth when he came. A baby, crying in a crib that darkness could not comprehend. And then he grew and did his most creative act yet. He painted us red, marking us clean with his death. And he rose again, giving us new threads so you could look like him, friend. Creative and called. You are more like God than you've been told. Welcome to the Unboxed, Called and Creative Podcast. Hey family, welcome back to the podcast. I am your host, Iman the Messenger, uh, as I always say. And um, yeah, how are you? How are you doing? um how's your day going so far uh how are your creative projects um how are you walking with jesus um some questions to think about but um today um is an interesting one so i was um <laughs> this is gonna sound funny um but like most of us um i was in the shower and um it, it's i don't know what it is about the shower right like I feel like the shower is where a lot of people get a lot of like revelation and epiphanies um, of some sort. So I was in the shower and I was actually listening to King Jesus by KB and No Big Deal. For those of you who listen to um, uh, Christian hip hop uh, slash rap, that kind of um, CHH scene, Christian hip hop, yeah um you will understand what i'm talking about but song called uh, king jesus and the lyrics are absolutely just crazy like they're amazing they're amazing man and um i was listening to it and i had this feeling it, it was it was quite strange i just heard god say to me um my heart is in this as well and when he said that to me, I thought to myself, wow, like, yeah, no, your your heart is really in this. Your heart is really, really in this as well. Your heart is not just in um, traditional worship music. Your heart is not just in the, the, the old school hymns. Um, your heart is not just in, uh, I don't know, Christian movies or... Um, I don't know, like Christian poems, like your heart is in whatever art form that we will render to you. Whatever art form that we will include you in, your heart is in that. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, we're going to talk about um, creativity and art and how this um how these two things belong to god they belong to god they've always belonged to god um from the beginning of time god was the source of all creativity um and so we're going to discuss that today we're going to discuss um how that impacts you as an unboxed called and creative person um and just just some things, uh, just some things as to how we kind of navigate that in the world. So, um, 
Yeah. Let's read uh, Colossians chapter 1 from 15 to 18. And before we do that, actually, let's pray. Um, let's pray. Father, just want to thank you for uh, this time together. I want to thank you for this um, opportunity to talk about um, creativity once again and talk about it from um, the perspective of your sovereignty and your ownership of all creativity and your ownership of all art forms oh lord um, i pray god that every single word that i'm about to speak will land um, on open hearts um, and i pray father god that um, people will leave here strengthened uh, leave here with tools uh, leave here convicted god to really give themselves and their art and their creativity um, and their gifts and their abilities uh, back to you because you know what to do with them. In Jesus' name, amen. Cool, cool, cool. Right, let's do it. So, uh, Colossians 1, 15 to 18, it says, uh, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Uh, for by him all things were created, both in the heavens and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is also the head of the body, the church, and he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he himself will, will come to have first place in everything. Everything, everything, everything. So, um... Yeah, this is a really be beautiful scripture. It's actually one of my one of my favorite scriptures, I think, because it really summarizes um the supremacy of Jesus Christ, right? And uh his divinity, who he is um you know, and um I think it just takes it to a very cosmic level. Um and it always does give me a bit of what's this word called? Grounding, it always grounds me um, in the faith and grounds me in who is in control, right? Um, and who really is the author and the finisher of my faith, um, and that would be Jesus. So let's look at this scripture, man. Um, you know, this, this scripture makes some bold claims, right? Very, very bold claims. Um, <laughs> the Bible here says that, um he is before all things and in him all things hold together it says all things have been created through him and for him wait a second it didn't say some things it said all things and this is talking about jesus right he is the image of the invisible god the firstborn of all creation for by him all things were created both in the heavens and on earth visible and invisible um and so you know that's kind of the first the first thing that i get from this is that if we're talking about creativity we're talking about art we're talking about painting we're talking about types of painting we're talking about music we're talking about genres of music we're talking about dance we're talking about types of dance uh we're talking about instruments and we're talking about types of instruments we're talking about plays and we're talking about types of plays we're talking about uh videography and the methods of vid videography right the types of different videography whether you've got cine uh, cinematic video videography whether you've got um like a documentary style of videography experimental film um you've got animated film like all of these things were created through jesus and I know it's 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 a funny one because I think what people have been taught and obviously even us, right, in the kingdom of God, we've kind of subconsciously been been taught that the sacred and the secular has like a divide in the sense of you no, know, Jesus is over here and everything else is over here. When actually, no, Jesus is over here. 
But all the other things that we see in the world came from him, but they've just been perverted. Right? Everything came from Jesus, but it's just been perverted. And now we see human beings use their gifts, use their passions, uh, use their abilities, their creativity, and the beautiful art forms that God had already invented before we discovered them for evil. You know, and this is why, you know, the title of this is is about all, you know, all art belonging to God, because it really, it really does. Right. The Bible says that uh, there is nothing new under the sun. Right. And so what that really means is that before we were even created, right, when God created the heavens and the earth and he created the sun and the moon and this and that, like. He had already invented all of these things that we stumble upon, right? <laughs> that we um, put two and two together and then we create this new genre or we create this new dance or we create like this new thing. It's not really new. Uh, it's not really new, man. Like there's, there's nothing new under the sun. So um, I want to read this, right? I want to read Proverbs 25 verse 2. It says, it is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the glory of kings is to search out a matter. Essentially, what this proverb is saying is that God already has and knows everything. And anything that we ever like invent or discover, God already hid that. Like, it's like, um, <laughs> uh, I'll give an example, man. It's like, um, let's say you have children, right? And you're playing um, a game of treasure hunt with them. And you hide some bits of treasure in the garden, right? You already had the treasure. Like, the treasure is yours. You know where the treasure is. You know what the treasure is. You know what the treasure does, right? But your child, your child's job is to go into the field in your garden and to try and find the treasure that you've hidden in different places. Now, it will be, it will be quite foolish. And children, I guess ch some children would do this because, you know, they're children, right? And they don't, they don't have understanding. Um, it will be quite foolish to, for the child to uncover the treasure and to <laughs> claim the treasure as their own invention or discovery to act as if that treasure or that thing that they found was of their own doing that they were self-made when actually someone already put it there for them to find it it's the same with god god already put these things in place for us to find all of these new creative things that people are doing around the world, God already put it there for us to find. We are not that great. <laughs> the Bible says that we're made in the image of God, right? That God created us. And so he's already put things here that we find along the journey, that we find as the human race uh, continues to get smarter, as the human race continues to... Um, just improve and you know become more efficient it's not just it's not us that's doing that it's not us that is picking these things out but it is it is god who has who has put those things there um which i find um which i find really really awesome right and um follow the train of thought because you know we are going somewhere and i i will speak into what this means for us as unboxed called and creative people right so you know, one thing to note here is that, yeah, God, God already knew the combinations of different things that we put together. He already knew that. You know, if you're a chef, like God already knew that frying onions in the pan and then adding like eggs on top of that. And then, you know, maybe adding some tomatoes and adding some salt and some black pepper. Like he already knew that that would create an omelet. When God put all the ingredients on the planet, he already had every single cooking combination in his mind. 
And he knew that, as I said from the last scripture, that we would search it out, that we would stumble upon these things, that we would put these things together, right? As the Bible says, it is God's glory to conceal something, but it is the glory of kings. And, and that word kings is not just talking about royal kings. It, it could be uh, speaking about just mankind. It's our glory to seek these things out. Um, and yeah, like, as I said, like, you know, as I, as I, as I mentioned before, like, I don't know, we, we think that we're the ones who, who did it first. And, you know, I mentioned before that Jesus, right, let's talk about Jesus. Jesus is the, uh, firstborn, um, among, among the dead, right? He is the first and the last. All things were made through him and for him. Like when God, when God the Father created everything, he made it through Jesus and for Jesus. Because what, what does the Bible say? The Bible says that the word is Jesus Christ, right? That in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God, right? And uh, the word took on flesh and then came down and dwelt among us. The Bible's talking about Jesus there. And the reason why I'm mentioning this is, is this. I think that sometimes we don't see Jesus as God, but we see him more as a Jewish teacher or a Jewish man. Um, and so we don't, it's hard to make the connection that, that through Jesus Christ came all the different cultures of the world. Just because Jesus was born into a Jewish culture does not mean that it does not mean that his identity was not God. That through him in the beginning of time, before he came to earth to visit us, everything was not, you know, made through him. Everything was made through him. You know, every everything was made through him. And I think <laughs> one thing that came to my mind when I was thinking about this is that, like, you know, if you think that Scottish people can do their highland uh, highland dances really amazingly i can guarantee you that jesus can do the highland dance even better than scottish people you know if you think that rappers like like think about the best rapper that you know like the best rapper you know that rapper does not like like pe it pe that rapper pales in comparison to jesus Jesus is the greatest rapper of all time. We haven't seen him rap, but we know that the gift of rapping comes from God. That God already thought about rapping. That God already thought about singing. Think about the greatest singer you know. Now imagine, imagine, imagine God singing. God is the greatest singer that you'll ever know, right? As I said, it is God's glory to conceal something and it is the glory of us to search it out. This was here way before we invented it. All of these things were here way before we invented it. Um, and so, yeah, look, God is in all arts. God is in all arts. But I want to make a disclaimer, right? God is in all arts, except for the art that carries sinful content. Uh, let me read this scripture. First John chapter 1 verse 5 it says this is the message we have heard from him and announced to you that god is light and in him there is no darkness at all james 1 verse 13 no one is to say when he is tempted i am being tempted by god for god cannot be tempted by evil and he himself does not tempt anyone so what does this mean? It really means that human beings are the ones who use God's gifts for evil. Like we're the one who uses gifts in a perverted manner. All art forms come from God. All of them. Every single art form you can think of on the planet comes from God. It's about what we are using it for. You know, and this is why like, you know, it's really hard for people to see certain uh types of sounds as good like for instance right you listen to okay 
Uh, how do I? <laughs> you listen to Bashment, for instance, right? Um, those of you who are uh, Caribbean or uh, just Black Caribbean African, you you know what I'm talking about. If you listen to Bashment, um, you know the first thought that comes to your mind is this is really sexual music. You know, like this is X-rated music. This is music that causes people to lust, right? But is it the music itself or is it how long we've been using that type of sound to create music that has lyrics of lust that now obviously causes people to think every single time they hear Bashment that this is X-rated. Like, like it doesn't even take much anymore. Once we hear, once we hear a certain Bashment beat, we already think, oh man, no, this, this is, this is evil music. And it's so sad because I don't think that beats in and of themselves are evil. I think that beats uh, combined in a certain way evoke certain emotions, but the lyrics that also follow that emotion can be godly. It can be good. It can be right, right? It's like, it's like love songs, for instance, right? Love songs have a certain melody um, that evoke emotions of affection, right? But if the lyrics accompanying that are immoral and wrong and evil and about, about, about cheating, right? And about um, promiscuity, right? And about polygamy. And that's what we're going to associate with that. But if the lyrics are about monogamy, are about a single-minded love on one person, is about a pure love that isn't, isn't crude, right? That is a good thing. And guess what? God is pleased in that because that, uh, that combination is being used correctly as was intended in his mind. God doesn't make mistakes. Like, and he, he, he didn't make any mistakes when he made all the art forms that he made. But us human beings, we pervert the art forms that he's given to us. And we have to, you know, we have to, um, we have to be accountable for that, you know? You know? You know, like, painting is not evil. Painting is not evil. But when we use painting for evil, it is evil. Like, for instance, when somebody is, is <laughs> uh, when somebody is creating X-rated paintings, like literally erotic paintings, like their, their job is to paint erotic paintings. Not, I, I'm, and I'm not talking about, because there's a, there's a fine line, right, between what people might call like nudist art and erotic art, right? They, and they talk about how the nudist art is just an art form. All that stuff for me, you know, as a cool and creative person, that <laughs> I, I don't see the need for nudity just in general because we are in fallen bodies. And so when we see a nude person, in the end of the day, there is a sex, there's, there's going to be a seed that is sown in our hearts and we are going to, uh, what's this word called? Feed our lust because we are sadly in sinful bodies. And so those people who paint these erotic paintings and sell them, that's evil. It's perverted. The art form itself is not bad. Painting is not evil. But, but what is being painted? The motive behind painting. That's when these things become evil. So painting belongs to God. As I said before, rapping, rapping is not evil. But if one is rapping about abuse, about drugs, the glorific and the glorification of these things, right? If if one is rapping about the glorification of drugs, sex, uh, an abundance of money in the sense of of a, of a love, a love and a lust for money, um, violence, murder, that is perverted and that is evil, and that does not come from God. You are using His art form to commit evil and to make this world a, a worse place right dance is not evil um, but when you dance for the purpose of seducing somebody and 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 getting people to lust over your body that is evil 
Because what does the Bible say? The Bible says that we should not cause others to stumble. We should not cause others to sin. Jesus hates that. And so be a great dancer. Like dance really well. People should be um, captivated by your dancing. But if the captivation of your dancing is more seductive more and more sensual and sexual and lustful for you, then you are perverting the gift that God has given to you. And a perverted gift will never, ever, ever be the optimum of of what God uh, wants for us. Another example, I'll give you two more examples. Acting. Acting is not evil. But when you act in roles that go completely against the will of God, it, it might be. Now, it depends, right? If you're acting in a role that... Uh, goes against you know what God wants but the narrative of the story is to is to tell a story of of that being wrong to to, to show people that this is wrong or to show people that oh this can be redeemed then I don't think it's evil I believe acting is evil when you have to actually do something in the story that actually is causing you to sin so, for instance, if you have to actually be involved in a sex scene and, and actually have sex with your co-worker as an actor, that is fornication. You, I mean, you, you literally, you are fornicating if you are actually having sex with them, right? Another thing to consider with acting, if you're a married person and your role um, requires you to kiss somebody, you are being unfaithful. You can't turn around and be like, no, this is just my job. I'm just acting. No, you have kissed someone. We, we can't put this mask of acting or mask this mask of creativity over sin. Creativity does not trump holiness. Holiness is the lens as to which we should see creativity through. Like purity is the lens that we should see creativity through. God and his morality is the lens that we should see creativity through because creativity came from God. So if, you, if you're kissing somebody in an acting role, like you, you, need, to, you, need, you need to pray about that. <laughs> Essentially, um, you got to pray about that, man, because that, that's not, um, it's not, it's not optimum. It's not right. Last example I'll give is this. Videography is not evil. But when you use videography to shoot X-rated content and distribute it around the world, that is perverted and that is evil. Videography is is an amazing gift. Right now, I'm using videography, right, to um, showcase myself and, and, you know, display myself on your screen. Um... But how am I using it? I'm using it so that I can edify you, right? I'm using it so that I can spread the truth of God. I'm using it so that um, people who are unboxed, called and creative can have a place to be equipped, right? And we, we ought to use these things that God has given us, these things that God hid for us that we've found out about and that we're, we're growing in as human beings. We're supposed to use those things to glorify God. The Bible says that you should let your, you should let your light shine and do your good works in such a way, right, that they glorify your Father who is in heaven. This is the purpose of our good works. This is the purpose of our gifts. This is the purpose of our talents and our creativity. It's always the point back to the one who gave it to us. If it doesn't look like him, then you're not using it properly. If your creativity does not look like God, then you're not using it in the way you're supposed to. I hope you get my drift. So yeah, what does this mean for us as I wrap up? Um, Number one, God created your gifts, so God knows how it is best used, so ask him for help. Um, I think, you know, at times we make our walk with Christ so religious, so um, boring, (laughs) when God is not at all. And if you find yourself, you know, doing a creative project and 
you need assistance, ask God. Literally, that there is no better person on the planet to ask for assistance with creativity than God, who created the universe. Like, you can't even tell me everything that pertains to one of those stars in the sky. Like, you can't tell me all of its properties. You, you can't. You can't tell me all of the properties of oxygen. Like, you, you, obviously, we can try and look at it molecular. I'm sure there's even more to oxygen that we don't even know, right? There is more to, like, even my skin, right, than any of us could ever really explain. And God created all of that. The detail, the excellence, the craftsmanship, the genius. Like, if there's anybody to ask, how do I improve in my creativity? What do I use my creativity for? It, it is God. Um, he knows how to use your gifts. Um, second thing I'll say is this. Your gifts are most effective when used in line with the one who made them. Um, similar to the first point, right? Third point, and this is like an example. Now, imagine a hoover or a vacuum deciding that I am going to primarily suck up metal sharp objects. Now, you know what? The vacuum could do it. It's possible <laughs> for the vacuum to hoover up uh, sharp and metal objects. But it's not optimum. Firstly, the vacuum will get damaged after a while because the vacuum is using its abilities wrongly. And secondly, the manufacturer knows how the vacuum best functions for longevity, for efficiency, for impact. And that is not by, by hoovering up sharp metal objects. But it's by hoovering up dust, it's by hoovering up little wrappers, it's by hoovering up small, you know, bits of paper, um, hoovering up, you know, just dirt and like little particles of dirt. That is how a hoover or a vacuum is best used. And so, you know, to the unboxed, cool and creative uh, peeps that are watching this, I really want you to think today. How am I using my creativity? How am I using my gifts? How am I using my talents? Um, I want you to revert back to, or refer, sorry, refer back to the beginning of this podcast where I said that, hey, like, art is God's. And if we're using it in a way that is not him, then we are not using it to its full potential. And I want you to really think about that today. Um, yeah. That's been your podcast episode this week. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. See you on the other side. Peace. Hey, Iman here. I just want to say thank you so much for watching this podcast episode or listening to this podcast episode. Um, we really appreciate it over here. We're just trying to reach as many unboxed, called and creative people as possible. And with you watching it, liking it, sharing it and commenting, this really does help a ton. So please, if you haven't subscribed, if you haven't liked, if you haven't shared, if you haven't commented um, or given a review for the podcast, uh, please, please, please do that uh, now if you can. Okay, till next time. <laughs>